Alrighty guys, we are back here with another creature submission for the 2023 creature. So we are now moving on to round two <clears throat> of the creature vote. So in round two here, they're going to be picking their uh, the top 10 creatures. And they're going to be moving them on to the next round in which we vote in between the top 10 creatures to narrow it down even more and so on and so forth. So what we are going to do here is we're going to go look through the top 10 creatures. And as you can see here, we had quite of them that were way up there and were contending quite well. So as, as last time we checked, I even had someone come and tell me that this thing had won today, but it hasn't. So if you guys are still hoping on the Gorgo on winning or the Mitoregus Ned the Noodles or the... Even the giant bison. I even know someone was talking to me in my chat about wanting wanting that one to move on. Well, guess what? It's in the top 10. So we're gonna go quickly run off here the top 10 creatures. We got the we got the Bastion Beetle, we got the Gorgo, we got the Northrosaurus, Northrosaurus. It's a little egg collecting traveling buddy. Then we got the giant bison. Then we got the Rino Garnoth, Rino Garnoth. I think I got that, got that the first try. Yeah, in which this one is one that we're gonna actually come back. Actually, we're gonna go and read into this one right now. So, this guy is another insect. Um, actually, we're gonna go back one because I haven't read into this one at all. We're gonna go back to. I've not read into this guy at all. So. Let me quickly read all this, and then, oh, he's got two dossiers. This might make it, okay, um, so we're going to go with early birds, all right? I know this one's a lot nicer. This one's, like, more professional, though. I wonder if I should read this one. That's got like 900 upvotes on it, so it seems like this one's like definitely more focused on. So, let's go with the higher quality one. I'm sorry, this dude. I'll read through it as well. Um, here, uh, early bird. Also, I just said, said your name's early bird. That's your t that's your like reward. The new the news. I'll read through your post here as well. But I think the one I'm going to read out here is this one for you guys. So I'm going to get to it. Alrighty. So I'm going to go over just a quick summary of what this one is. So this one's going to be able to have a chance of making unfertilized eggs fertilized. So basically, if you're riding on the back of him, you can run up to uh, hell. Even in my the way I have my game set up, the way this would work is you could run up to a Titan steal a fertilized egg you could run up to a giga steal a fertilized egg you could run up to a rex steal a fertilized egg and now the way i say that i know that sounds a little op but i would also imagine with like say a giga it's like a one percent chance like one out of a hundred eggs that you steal from a giga could be fertilized compared to say if you steal a parasaur egg say it's a 25 percent. that's one in four eggs so that would that would be a way that they could balance it. Um, I, he also is semi fast on land, but is a very fast swimmer. Um, it's gonna have a saddle, all that stuff. Um, it's gonna be able to make it so that way you can hold your breath under a while as well on the saddle, and it's gonna have some special ability to launch out of the water. Um, and it's gonna be kind of a lazy lazy lazing around kind of creature and generates stamina much faster okay oh if you provide it relaxation it would generate stamina faster again it provides oxygen for you and then it's got some extra i haven't read the extra yet okay legit what his extra thing is is like you know when i said like yo giga one percent Parasaur 25. It's legit him saying that exact stuff, but like 20% for a Rex, 60% for a Dodo. Yeah, that's fair, but I would probably maybe even go down to say 10% on a Rex, 5%. Yeah, 
because you don't want to make this common. You could also probably make this like a slider in the any on mate how like how common it actually is. And it would make the game a little bit more immersive because you could find wild eggs. Okay. Now skill. I'm gonna read yours for this one. The Northrosaurus. Northrosaurus. No though sort no thosaurus. I think that's how it's set. Yours is the Northrosaurus. No thosaurus. No, I'm just reading it like an idiot every time. Okay, um, let's read through this. Alrighty, so this version of it, it's, again, large marine lizard basking on the rocks near the beach. Um, it's going to be smaller than a plesiosaur, a little slender. Um, what was it? Incredible abilities in the water, so it's going to get kind of like a water buff. Uh, it's going to have like front leg claw attack, I believe. And then for taming, it's going to be passive tame. But I believe it might be passive tame kind of like uh, Equus's. So you give it fish. and Well, yeah, Equus or... Uh, what do you call him? Andrew Sarkis. So you give him fish. You ride on its back for a little bit, doing a little bit of a rodeo. And eventually it might kick you off. Um... Or a fish to give him, legit right here, fish to calm him down. Um, then he's going to be a fast swimmer, powerful jaws, incredible speed, like a torpedo attack. Uh, it's also going to be able to store fish liver oil. And you'd be able to make fish elixir with it, which will be able to increase the quality of your fish loot. So kind of like a... Kind of like a Liptopleridon buff, but for fishing. So, and then I haven't read this part. Again, it's mostly just going over the utilities of it, but in a story format like the dossier does. So, we are going to move on to the next creature, which is the Rhino, Rhino Nagate. I, I said it right the first time. Rinogatha. Rinogana. Rinoganthia. Rinoganthia. Okay. Giant bug. Okay. This one I did come by and read beforehand, but I kind of forgot what it all said. But I do understand its basics and it seems pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. It is legit a parasitic bug. So we're going to go through. Okay, so here it's going to go into the biology and backstory of the creature. So, it's just explaining where he got the design for the head. Um, apparently this thing is one of the oldest insects around, or kind of like the... I think the way... was it? The way he's having is kind of like a bridge in between insects and... What are they? Miropede? Millipede, the these guys, the multiple segment ones. So that's what we got for that. Then we got like butterfly wings here, so that way it's like got like defensive things, kind of like my Sinos have, where they got the eyes on their wings. Okay, and then he's just going into like the fantasy part of it here, like how it has some glowing amber looking stuff dripping out of it. Okay, and basically, he's just saying he, why he made it a big flying insect here in this part. Um, now we're on to the skills. So, I'm going to read through the skills here, and we will see what we got. Okay, so it's going to basically, what he has it here is going to be like a missing link that combines all three forms of insects into one. So, it's going to be a flyer that's capable of going into water. At full speed without dismounting its rider and not losing any speed. And again, again, seeing how it's a flyer, it's going to be able to land on land, okay? So, this actually seems pretty awesome. Alrighty, so again, it explains how it's going to be able to go at the same speed in the water as it is in the air. And how it's going to fly in between the speed of a flying wyvern in a diving mag meganera. Meganera. 
so and then it's going to be kind of like a quetzal but it's not going to be able to carry things like in our like was it it's not going to be carry able to carry things over what a quetzal can or an argentavis somewhere around in there so now we're going to be going over to the heavy carry all righty so when it's landed you're going to have an option like the Carcanos to carry two small creatures like an Argentavis. Okay? So you're going to be able to carry an Anki in one hand and a Diplo in one hand. So you're going to get Metal with one, Rock with another. And then when it's flying, it's going to be able to carry uh, basically large creatures so like rexes and then when it's in the water again large creatures so uh plesiosaurs and all that and i imagine it'd also be able to carry the small to medium creatures as well so all righty so this just goes into the eyes and the scaring ability that it would have and what it affects so it would scare some creatures on land i believe Oh, well, while you're n just while you're not carrying anything. Okay, so you can do it anywhere, just not while you're carrying anything. Uh... Oh, it says this effect doesn't apply on Earth and air. All right, I thought I read that somewhere. So, yeah, you're going to only be, be able to use this underwater. Um, And it's going to be able to shake it's wing well the effect only applies underwater but it doesn't work on earth or air so you're going to be able to do it on earth air earth air or water so you're going to shake your wings open them up flash the eyes and scare creatures to immobil immobilize them for a minute so either you could get a head start and damage on them or you got a couple seconds to flee um to me all right let me read this part <laughs> Oh, okay, so this just goes into how it swims and how it mimics a Tuso with its wings. Where it kind of, like, brings them in like an octopus and then pushes them back out. I think a couple water bugs do that as well. Okay, this is going into its damage um, via the mouth. So, again, what you would expect from something biting. Especially with that kind of face. Yee. A okay, better version of the jaw attack here while you're carrying things to do, inflict damage more while you're swimming or flying. Um, natural resource, natural resource producer. I for a minute there I thought that's a natural resin producer, so I had to go back. Okay, so this kind of goes in how to the resin's gonna glow like a bioluminescence from uh like a shoulder pat, but it's gonna constitute to the oxygen stat instead with the glow um and then it goes into how it can be like an a substitute for sap honey amber or any, or any other variant in use and it, that it never spoils and that it can stack oh no that it can't stack but it never spoils Alrighty, so there is a lot here and I am kind of running a lot of time here for my 25 minute limit. So, uh, again, we got the saddle here. It's going to kind of be like a motorcycle on the back. Um, we do got some weaknesses here. But I wanted to go down here to, like, read you guys the, what is it? Breeding 2.0. Females can manually impregnate your own creatures and try mates by grabbing them while flying or swimming by holding right mouse button and then pressing left control while mating is active if there is a male nearby with mating maten activated it it will trigger the same emanation in the wild ones do so basically there's two ways to tame this and there's two ways to breed this i believe one is to get impregnated and the other one is to like, you know, tame it normally. And then debreeding is breeding normal or impregnating a creature, bypassing a bunch of stuff to do it. So I wonder if like even doing that, like you can hijack some stats from a creature, say 
So you got a Giga with high health and you impregnate it that way. Maybe that baby can snatch some stats from the impregnated host. So that was our number five slot. We've already read Ned the Noodles. We did we do the Lord of the Sky? No, the Hezataka. I don't think we did. I keep on hitting tab. I don't want to because that keeps on bringing me places I don't want to be. Thank you. Okay. 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 So he wants this to, or the way they have this set up is that it's going to be an apex flyer. It's going to be aggressive flyer. So kind of like a wyvern would be aggressive, but the size of a quetzal. So yeah, about the size of a wyvern. Um, but does more cre does more damage to creatures that are smaller than it. Players, of course, would be in that in a bomber saddle. That also seems pretty awesome. Alrighty, so it's going to have close range combat in the air. More importantly, the way you tame this thing seems pretty awesome. You got to drop onto its back while you're flying. And go basically for a rodeo ride in the air. And which, I don't know why people always want the rodeo rides. I think the Andrew Sarkis was fun. Um, Equus was the only other one I can think of. So I don't really know why they want more of these, but I'm down. Um, are these, like, posted images for it? Oh, yeah, we do got images. So we got something there. We did also have another one here that looked pretty awesome. Let's go look at this post. Okay. Oh, uh, it is just a no, and then they do got a... Well, so much for zooming in on that. I was gonna zoom in on that and see what we got. So, yay. Alrighty, guys, so we did get to go in and look at the top seven creatures, so I'm sorry to do this to you, especially to the Panther Autrix, because I went in there and looked at it. It seems pretty awesome, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I've looked at the giant cheetah before, it did not enthuse me a lot. Um, so, let's quickly go through our list. So, so far, in the first round of the creature vote, we had the Bastion Beetle in first, the Gorgon Opside in second, the Nothrosaurus in third, the Giant Bison in fourth, then the Rhin Rhino Nigatha, Rhinogatha, that is in fifth. Then the Mito Regus, Mitro Regus, the giant mountain goat from Ned the Noodle, that is in sixth place. Then we have the Hatzigata, the I'm like losing my mind here. Hat Zigo Pertraxit. What is wrong with people just naming the things like a right word? The Hatzog, we have the Hatzog here. I'm just gonna abbreviate it. In seventh, we have we have the Panther Atrox. In four, in eighth, I almost said fourth. Then we have the giant cheetah in ninth. Then we have the Razan, the Rosin, the the T Rex tooth terrestrial crocodile in tenth. So those are the top ten creatures. So those are the ones that we were most likely be beating, be voting for. Um, did I count that right? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Okay. I thought the dino, the duck king made it in, but I guess not for a second. So yeah, those are the top ten creatures. So in the next community, uh, was it community crunch wild card will be announcing when that vote for the for the second round starts. But the these ten creatures are the most likely ones to be in it. So. Hopefully you guys are ready for that.